So with that, uh, I'm going to pass to Sanjana, who is a staff data scientist uh, at VMware and is a practitioner working uh, on billing data there. Sanjana, are you ready to go? Yes, thank you for the introduction, JR. Hello and good morning to you all. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I joined the FinOps Foundation, I think about four years ago, and it was quite small then. It was a few hundred people, but I still remember the warm welcome I received and the organization still as warm as it is with thousand and counting. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here today and talk to you about um, normalizing your cloud billing data. As introduced earlier, my name is Sanjana Srivatsa, and I am a staff data scientist at VMware, but in, at the core of it, I am a FinOps practitioner with my cloud business office. We can get started. Okay. We can start off by looking at snapshots of billing data from the three major cloud providers, AWS, GCP, and Azure. So AWS, for example, can have dozens or potentially hundreds of columns depending on your tags. So it becomes hard to truly show the data in its entirety. But what you have here is a anonymized small subset of important columns from the real data set itself. Although I've given you very little to work with right off the bat, you can tell that there are many differences between these data sets. And if you have uh, any, any differences that you have noticed, please put them in the chat and we'd like to hear what you think are your major differences that you see across your three clouds. Before we dive into the details of these differences, I want to take an example use case and kind of see how we would navigate it using this original data structure, this original structure of billing data that exists. Next slide, please. Thank you. So let's assume you are a multi-cloud company and you have about 50% coverage of resource or spend-based commitments across your clouds, which is RIs and SPs. This means that some of your accounts or projects are getting a good discount and some of them aren't. So this means potentially budgets getting overshot, forecast being wrong, and a lot of angry emails and unhappy DMs. So you decide to implement this a fairer cost allocation system that peanut butter spreads discounts to all of your accounts. For this, you would need the following data. A method to identify discounted usage and your cost before and after discounts. So now I want to say that this is the most simplistic form of pseudocode I could put in here. It doesn't include nuances like credits, EDP, or tiered discounts if any of this apply to you. But you can see that it can quickly get complicated to use this data, but more importantly, my experience as a developer or an analyst or a data scientist is not consistent across three clouds. This means anyone like me in my company will probably have to spend the time to understand these nuances, the discount models of each cloud, how it presents itself, and when truly all they want to know is what is my cost before and after a discount. Now, I know all of you are probably not a multi-cloud company. Uh, most of you are probably just a single cloud, work with a single cloud provider, and that's okay. If you are a multi-cloud company like we are, you will feel a stronger need for this normalization because of just how differently each cloud showcases their billing data. But even if you are a single cloud provider, even if you work with just a single cloud provider, you still want to reduce the effort that it takes to learn the data set for all the people working with this data in your company. You just want to make the data more understandable and more accessible. Okay, next. Next slide, please. Anjai, I was just commenting on the chat. Also, somebody was saying that this looks like very different data sets. And I think that's kind of the point, right? You're making, which is that they are so different between the cloud providers. Exactly, yeah. So as JR said, uh, I want to introduce you to a concept of tidy data. Uh, the tidy data is a concept in R, which I am an avid user of. But if you are, if you use Pandas in Python, you may have heard of the concept of wide format data as compared to as compared to not narrow format data. And this is wide format of, or tidy data as we call it. And you can see that the structure of data, uh, the tidy data set itself will have one observation per row, one variable per column, and one value per box of like a like an Excel or CSV, if you will. You may be more familiar with the words measure and dimensions um, it, because I've heard that being used a lot in the industry. So I'll explain what that means. Um, in this case, if you add one measure, one new measure to your data set, you get one more column. And I'm doing something with my with my with my uh, mouse, but I'm realizing that you're not able to see it. But uh, 
basically if you add one additional measure you get one additional column but not it will not have any impact to the number of rows but if you add a dimension however it makes your data richer and so it adds a column but in addition it also has a significant impact on the number of rows so let's kind of look at what tidy data or normalized data looks like uh, from a multi-cloud perspective next slide please Thank you. So this is what a normalized or a tidy data set for multi-cloud billing would look like. You can already see it's cleaner. Uh, you can define what list price, net price, and effective price means for you. But in this case, I have considered list price to be public pricing, so absolutely no discounts involved. Net price will be some layer of discounts involved if you have applicable EDP or tiered discounts or credits, something like that. Effective price would be uh, price after your um, RI savings plan, whatever you whatever you want, but distributed across all of your accounts. Uh, the beauty of this format is that it scales up and down pretty seamlessly. So if you want to know what your static IP costs are, for example, in AWS, you would just add a dimension, as I alluded alluded to earlier, called level to cloud service or something like that. Um, and it's just as simple as adding a column saying level to cloud cloud category. And you get you can you can make this data as rich or as zoomed out as you want. Same same goes for adding a measure. So you can you want you probably want to know the month on month growth rate for each of these services. So you it just show up as a new column and a measure, and you can make this data as rich or as zoomed out as you want. And working with this kind of data is easy. Your data scientists and your analysts will love it. It is scalable. And most importantly, it works really well with APIs. If you're feeding data into a microservice, this is, this is a really good way to have your data. You can collapse this data, make it less granular, very easy to aggregate this data. You can have this data set just kind of zoom into uh, just an account level per cloud and that, that you can do it very easily. So this, depending on the size of your data, financial analysts can work with this data very easily on Excel. Or if you have much larger data like we do, you may need a big data system like Hadoop or something else. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, unnormalized data differences in AWS GCP and Azure. I see on the chat that it's blowing up and you've all kind of identified really good uh, differences between the three clouds. But I have kind of summarized a few of them for you here. Um, and I will also violate uh, JR's uh, protocol of not having a pitch because I have a pitch at, pitch at the end of this for focus. Um, so currency is different across the three clouds depending on how, you, um, how you've enabled your billing system. Pricing model is different. So AWS bills per hour or per second depending on the product. GCP bills per second, standard. Um, Billing period is is mostly monthly, but some for some of for some services you may have hourly billing. Uh, product categories. This one's my favorite because it can get really complicated really fast. Um, EC2 product code, for example, in AWS includes EBS volume, static IP, NAT gateway, etc. Azure, on the other hand, has virtual machines, uh, a meter category column called virtual machines, which only includes compute. In GCP, the service description column, but which says compute engine, it includes network, egress, ingress, static IP, and storage. So it's, as you can see, the combination of what these uh, cloud providers call to be compute is very different. And so there is truly a need, a strong need for normalization and kind of making that, that lingo um, consistent so that you don't have to have all of your thousands of engineers learn the same language and learn all of these nuances just to be able to work with the data. Next slide, please. Okay, so these are my takeaways. Um, the structure of how the data is represented is different across the three clouds in their billing. There is definitely a benefit to transforming all of them into a tidy structure as we showed with consistent naming. Uh, time granularity, currency, usage metrics, billing period, pricing model, data units, all of these are just examples of some of the differences uh, across the three clouds. And even if you aren't use, even if you aren't a multi-cloud company at this point, there is definitely a benefit to normalizing your data and having consistent terminology as Amity has mentioned in their previous presentation also 
making this not making this language specific to your uh, your business and your company is 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 really beneficial and normalization is kind of the base of it and if you have more ideas on what is the differences between the three clouds and how you can have a consistent naming structure please join us in our focus group which i believe Udham will talk to you next about. It's a fantastic group. Udham's fantastic. Uh, I've learned so much from being a part of the group already. So I strongly suggest you join if you already haven't. Thank you. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to finops.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.